Dennis, are you there? At your service, sir. Give me Harlem episode 7. Will do, sir. No one knows exactly who coined the term strong black woman, or even exactly when the term originated. What we do know is the trope is uniquely American and has been germane from slavery to the present day. In comparison to white femininity, which is valued for beauty, vulnerability, and maternal softness, black women have been valued for their labor, both literally and figuratively. A strong black woman suppresses her emotions, never letting anyone see her sweat. She is ambitious, but still makes time to be supportive, even carrying her mate, her friends, and her family when necessary. Being labeled a strong black woman is a rite of passage. She is resilient, independent, and capable. But what if she isn't? The Foolishness of the Strong Black Woman Harlem Episode 7 Crooked Images Welcome to Management Highlights Daily. Harlem Episode 7 is titled Strong Black Woman. That is why it took a bit more time to finish this video. A lot to unpack. This episode could have been great, but they just dropped the ball in certain scenes. And we're gonna break it down. We're gonna highlight the negative effects of the strong black woman image and why the manosphere keeps growing. This video also gives some insight into why there is a black manosphere. We had a good time doing our research for this video. Shout out to the Patreon gang, salute! The original video is gonna be on Patreon because we have to respect the YouTube guidelines. That's why you will get a censored and filtered YouTube friendly version. So if you like what we do and you want to experience our content to the fullest extent, support us on Patreon. This video contains a lot of spoilers, so you've been warned. Now it's time for us to dive into this and do what we have to do. Because we men and we. We men and we. No one knows exactly who coined the term strong black woman, or even exactly when the term originated. What we do know is the trope is uniquely American and has been germane from slavery to the present day. And black women embrace this term. Melissa Harris Perry, who wrote the book Sister Citizen, Shame, Stereotypes, and Black Women in America, has an interesting take on the strong black woman image. So the deal is, of course, though, that African-American women never just accept the negative images. It's not all just bad. We still like being who we are. And part of it is a resistance strategy in which we create this fourth image. And this fourth image is this attempt to push back against the shame, to manage those shame strategies. Historians have talked brilliantly about this in the context of the politics of respectability, the dissemblance of sort of maintaining a perfect exterior in order to push back against any notion that you could be any of these negative stereotypes. And so the strong black woman emerges as this internal community narrative about the ability of black women under all circumstances to be able to manage, to be able to do well, to be able to stand up for family, for community, for church, for spouses and to do so almost naturally, or essentially, or as an inborn right. And in fact, so strong is this notion of the strong black woman that it becomes a kind of racial imperative. If you are weak, if you are sad, if you need help, then you are not only sort of failing in the terms of the general American individualism, rugged individualism, but you're actually failing the race. You are actually generating shame in your neediness, in your desire for help. So the strong black woman image is part of a defensive mechanism. Mrs. Harris Perry mentions that the strong black woman is the fourth image. More about that later. Let's continue. In comparison to white femininity, which is valued for beauty, vulnerability, and maternal softness, black women have been valued for their labor both literally and figuratively. This is where the distinguishing differences come in. Here at Manosphere Highlights Daily, we talk about female nature and the impact society has on women's behavior. This clip highlights that black and white women do not have the same background. They do not have the same history, at least not the same circumstances in this history. White women were raised by men, their fathers, patriarchy. Janice. Patriarchy. 
a form of social organization in which fathers or other men control the family, clan, tribe or larger social unit, or a society organized in this way. This femininity that we crave as men is heavily influenced by patriarchy. And that brings me to black women. Black men were never in charge of black women in the United States of America. Black men and black women were forced into slavery and owned by slave owners, exploited to work as indentured servants and labor in the production of crops such as tobacco and cotton. We're talking about a fabricated group of people created to serve a specific purpose. Like I always say, follow the money. Economics and politics go hand in hand. This attitude, this mentality that black women have can be traced back to this foundation of slavery. Melissa Harris Perry talks about the three images that led to the fourth image, which is the strong black woman. So there are three particular tilting images. The mammy, which I've talked about a bit here, but the other two are also highly recognizable. Jezebel, or the kind of uh, hot, lascivious, oversexed black woman. You certainly understand that she is rooted in the experience of American slavery. She's rooted in having to explain why it would be okay to use women's bodies to breed for economic purposes while simultaneously believing in the Victorian cult of true womanhood that says that women are on pedestals and above, right? So you've got to be able to explain how you can have a breeder who you also work in the fields, whose body is available to any male who the master deems appropriate, including himself, and simultaneously believe that women have to be protected and careful in this domestic sphere. And, and so in order to make that work, you have to create an image of black women as something other than this thing that is woman. So it's an old, old myth, but one that has very new resonance. So Aunt Jemima is old, Mammy is old, but then she shows up in all of these contemporary contexts. And similarly, there is the angry black woman. She's the latest figure. She is the sort of 1910, 1920s, 1930s version of black womanhood that still has this active role. We see her all the time. Again, you can run into her on a Super Bowl commercial for no apparent reason. Like you're just watching the Super Bowl, having a perfectly nice time, family over eating some chicken wings, having a nice time, and then, there's Sapphire, yelling at her husband and throwing cell phones at his head and beating up white women on the commercial for no reason. And you're just like, why, why is this happening, right? The Mammy, the Jezebel, and the angry black woman were created to serve the oppressor, the slave owner, the elites that run this world. Black people did not have the freedom to create their own narrative. That's a big reason why there is a black manosphere, because black men face a unique set of issues that need to be specifically addressed. Keep this foundation of slavery in mind. Let's continue. A strong black woman suppresses her emotions, never letting anyone see her sweat. She is ambitious, but still makes time to be supportive, even carrying her mate, her friends, and her family when necessary. Being labeled a strong black woman is a rite of passage. This is another example of why this is not a good series and why it's based on feel-good Kool-Aid. She said being called a strong black woman is a rite of passage. What rite of passage? Check this out. Today, probably right at this very moment, there are children in completely different parts of this world who are going through an impactful experience. They're having a coming of age event where their community comes together, highlights that moment that the child begins her journey to adulthood and marks the trail for them along the way. Maybe it's a young Maasai tribesman in Kenya preparing, for, to, preparing to start warrior training. Or an Navajo girl here in the American Southwest getting ready for her four-day Kinalda ceremony. Or a boy on the island of Vanuatu in the South Pacific. That looks fun. <laughs> or a child in the Inuit tradition in Alaska. And on and on. From Africa to the Arctic, from the Amazon to Australia, us humans have clearly recognized that this is important for our kids. And yet, most of us in our society don't have any such event. I didn't have any intentional ritual when I was a young teen. How many of you did? A couple hands go up. Not very many. And it's still the same 
for kids today. They do not benefit from this kind of event because we haven't created a way that we approach this. Where is that rite of passage for strong black women? Where is that ritual? Where is that ceremony that celebrates a black woman's transition into a strong black woman? Take a look at this clip from one of the rituals. Beneath White Mountain in New Mexico, the Mescalero Apache Reservation prepares for a coming of age ritual. Over the span of four days, 13-year-old Dashina Cochise will pass through ancient tests of strength, endurance, and character that will make her a woman. The Mescalero Apache hold the ritual every 4th of July. It's a grueling ordeal intended to prepare girls for the trials of womanhood. More than 10 hours later, Dashina is still dancing. The medicine men greet the sun, a signal that the final test is near. Morning star, Morning star feather. Yeah. Everything went well. She's just gonna be a strong woman. Her community gathers, acknowledging that this girl has earned the right to live as a woman of the tribe. We're gonna put the link in the description so you can watch the full video. What I like about this video is that the mother said she's gonna be a strong woman. Why? Because her daughter has proven herself. And that's why I have a problem with queen, goddess, strong black woman terminology. Because it's based on feel good Kool-Aid. No substance. I have eaten many, 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 many of these so-called queens, goddesses and strong black women for breakfast. Because this series is aimed at them. They don't care what a rite of passage is. They don't care about details or substance, just how it feels. And that's the next point. She is resilient, independent, and capable. But what if she isn't? The negative effects of being a strong black woman. The episode starts in the hospital and they highlight a true story. Whatever. My point is, I don't like to be treated like I'm weak sauce or petted like a damn dog. Quinn, you didn't tell anybody, did you? Oh my God, for the millionth time I didn't. Good. I don't need Camille in here tracing stomach pain back to the middle passage or some shit. Oh, hello, dear. So, you're anemic. Let's get you a blood transfusion, get your numbers back up. Okay, and what about her back and her pelvic pain? Oh, that's just Aunt Flo being a tough house guest. When your cycle's over in a few days, the pain will subside. What if it's been more than a few days? I've been on my period for 11 days now. What? Well, uh, every woman is different. Well, as a woman, I would say that 11 days deserves a far more aggressive approach to her diagnosis than Aunt Flo. And the Tylenol ain't cutting it for the pain. Ah, so you're here for drugs. I'm here because I passed out on a damn subway. We have a very strict policy against prescribing opioids in this community. Oh. Well, from what I hear, this community isn't the one that you need to be worried about. Now my friend is in serious pain. You have not done any ultrasounds, any uh, checks, As a doctor, any... I have her blood work and that tells me all I need to know. The doctor is not taking Ty's health condition seriously. This is happening to a lot of black women in the US. Black women are three to four times more likely to die around childbirth. And this is not, as most people theorize, related to the lack of prenatal care. This is most often due to the fact that black women aren't being heard. And we've seen women, women who have all of the resources in the world, Serena Williams, Beyonce, Allison Felix, who had issues around pregnancy and childbirth, and they were not listened to. You can find many videos and articles on this topic of black women dealing with racism in healthcare, and they highlight the foundation that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So this episode highlights some serious issues facing the so-called strong black woman. And in this case, it's healthcare. Checkmark, 100,000 followers and up. Okay, okay, I'll call you when I get to the gate. Shit, fuck. Ty faints at the airport after being misdiagnosed. Taraji P. Henson spoke about this negative effect of the strong black woman. 
we hurt and suffer just like others. And I just, I just always felt some kind of way about those titles. Um, once I became aware of what they were doing to us, um, the damage that it was creating for us and the stigma around black women um, to implement that we are strong enough to get over anything. That's why we suffer in, in, in the emergency rooms where, you know, we can handle it or we're tough. You know, our sister Serena Williams had a near death experience because what she's looked at because she's tough. She's a strong black woman like that. You have to be careful with that. Very careful yes. with that. Black women embraced this image without understanding the consequences that come with this territory. Raise your hand if you're married. None of you are married. Raise your hand if you would like to be married to your baby's father. One. <laughs> the rest of you who don't plan to get married, why don't you plan to get married? I'd like to know that. You, you already have your child to think about and then a, a whole family to care, to care for. You know, it's, it's a lot of responsibility. And then you don't want the commitments. I wouldn't want no man holding me down because I, I think I can make it as a single parent. But don't you think you might need help in raising that baby from a man? Not really. I didn't have a father. My father wasn't in the home. So, you know, it, it really, male figures are not substantially important in the family. Today, nearly 60% of all black children are born out of wedlock. We're gonna make a separate video about this, but this clip is one of the biggest reasons why the manosphere is blowing up because the results of these single moms raising their children are in. This strong black woman's mentality is unconsciously ingrained in the black woman's system. And that brings me to Camille. It's just, work has just been so crazy and I, I had to sacrifice something. Have you ever considered sacrificing work for therapy? Or do you only take care of yourself when your work schedule permits? Well, I thought that I could handle everything. Tell me about everything. She thought she could handle everything. Everything. And that's the mentality that modern women have. They want everything and they truly believe that they can have everything and deserve everything. But like I've said before, the results are in. Millennials are turning 40 years old this year. Check this out. <sighs> It's just, this is not how I pictured my life. I, I thought by now I'd be a renowned tenured anthropologist that little black girls would want to dress like for Halloween. I figured that Ian and I would be married, living in a single family brownstone, and I'd be enjoying two more years before having kids, but none of that has happened. And yes, there's this new guy, Jameson, and he's smart and, and, and nerdy, and he really pushes me, but then Ian, who I'm finally over, I'm just helping him put together his restaurant, he sends me this text. Are we making a mistake? That, that is a part of no plan. So now I'm just left with a bunch of confusion, my edges, a rent control department, and a bunch of student loan debt. She had a plan. She had an idea of what her life was gonna look like, and it didn't pan out that way. This is real. 10 years ago, Jay moved to Leeds for a new job, leaving behind her life and friends in London. I'm going to be turning 40 next year. I didn't think I would be in this situation when I got to this age. I was pretty sure I'd have the whole relationship thing sorted by now. It's not happened at all. I've actually spent most of my 30s single, um, which uh, is not how it is in Sex and the City. She mentioned Sex and the City. Like I've said before, women embraced this image, this idea and black women had no business joining the feminist movement or embrace feminist ideology because they have their own set of issues. And now they are forced to face reality because this strong black woman's image is not getting you the results you want. It will make you feel good in the moment, but it will hurt you in the long run. This life is not a sprint, but a marathon. And some women are coming out of the woodwork explaining this strong black woman trope is hurting them. The manosphere is growing and the next clip will show more proof why this is happening. When did you come up with your life plan? 18. My entire adult life dedicated to a plan that has fallen completely apart. 
Would you say that you're the same person you were at 18? Come on, no. So you've changed. So maybe it's okay for your plan to change too. To what? To whatever you want. So, or here's an idea, no plan at all. Just take life as it comes. Either you can play the hand you're dealt or mourn the one you've lost. Different doesn't always mean bad. <sighs> you're good. So now that these women are tired of being strong and independent, racked up student loan debt, racked up their body count, hit the wall, are single moms, now when the damage is done, they want to change the plan. We just did a video about damaged goods. Russell Wilson and Ciara are what they are looking for now. That's why women are infiltrating male spaces because they need to know what we're up to. Men had to deal with this attitude for as long as they can remember. And men are tired as well. And men change their plans as well. Nicki Minaj had to address these women to stop making videos about black men not dating black women and she follows with the same old bull crap of the strong black woman. So for all you that's doing that on TikTok, where y'all at? Eat a go away. Nobody gives a sh about you. And I want black women to stop posting about whether or not y'all 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 want black women or not. Okay? What well, I want black women just to focus on themselves, be successful and then you go out there and you decide the trajectory of your life, okay? Now, we're gonna highlight where this episode loses its strength. Sorry. I'm so sorry, I was in therapy, I just got your message. Uh, no worries, it's all good. You're in a hospital bed, it is not all good. I cannot believe that she needed surgery when that asshole doctor wouldn't even give her a pain pill yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> know what's bad when Ty is crying. I never thought I'd see the day. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to be strong. This shit is scary. Oh, honey. <laughs> why are you trying to be strong in a hospital bed? Yeah, being strong is so overrated. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. There's just, there's a lot going on. Everybody stop apologizing. Yes. Oh. Why do we always have to be the ones who apologize for oh, hurting? No. I am sick of this shit, y'all. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Quinn. You're the only one of us who's not a mess. That's not true. I am a mess. Oh. This is a serious issue, and the ladies are crying, but you can't take that crying seriously. And that's how they probably wanted it to look. And that's the problem with this series. They give women what they want to see, but they are presenting it in a crooked way. And now let Melissa Harris Perry explain. When I first started taking courses in cognitive psychology, my favorite research was about the crooked room. It is research about our cognitive perceptual abilities, right? It's not research about race and gender. It's about how our brains work. So here's what we would do. No, not us. 1950s researchers on cognitive psychology. They would take an individual, put them in a room that was dark, and then flip the lights on. And when the lights came on, all the angles of the room were crooked, right? So the door was set on an angle, the room was not at 90 degrees, there were pictures hanging on the wall, they were also at an angle. Everything in your field of perception was off kilter. And you were in a chair, like one of those chairs you might have at like Universal Studios with a, with a ride that was mobile. And your responsibility was to find the upright in this room. These were field dependency studies. The question was, how dependent are we perceptually on the field that we can see for figuring out what is up and down? Some people, a very small proportion of people are field independent. Doesn't matter how many crooked images there are, they can find their true upright. But most people, it turns out, are field dependent. And they can get themselves tilted in that chair as much as 45 degrees, but perceive themselves as straight up and down because they are in line with the crooked images all around them. Again, this is cognitive research. It's about how our brains work. But when I read that work, I said, oh, that's just like being a black woman in America. The work of citizenship is in part the work of being in a constantly, bafflingly crooked room where all the images of black womanhood that are coming back at you are crooked, are tilted, are sort of recognizable, but not quite. 
where the value of who you are that could be seen as most valuable would be the mammy. I got to tell you, it's a little cricket. It's a little off. So what you're seeing is watered down, a serious issue presented in a comical way. And it takes away the power of this scene, the connection with the characters, the connection with the issue. Take a look at this memorable scene from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. This is the type of scene that you cannot freeze. You really have to see it. And that's why we will not play it in the YouTube version. We will play it in the Patreon version. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was one of the funniest TV shows. But when it was necessary, they made it count. And that made this show so much better. What makes this scene incredible is not only the great acting, but it was recognizable to many, 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 many people who are fatherless and at the same question. Am I not good enough? How come he don't want me? This scene with Megan Good and Whoopi Goldberg was not able to make a great impact. Camille has a scene where she hears from Whoopi Goldberg's character that she's not good enough for the job because black people are held to a higher standard. The same thing with this scene, you cannot freeze it. You know, you have to go out there and see the whole thing. And that's why we will not play it here on YouTube. It's for Patreon. Megan Good is a good actress. She did a good job on her end. But it's the writers of the story. Whoopi Goldberg's character is giving her some serious information that black people in general have to deal with. And they don't make it count. That's why people won't remember it. Check this out from Scandal. He told you that you would be first lady and you believed him. Did I not raise you for better? How many times have I told you you have to be what? You have to be what? Twice. What? Twice as good. Twice as good as them to get half what they have. You just feel the weight on her shoulder, the pressure she has to deal with, the gravity of the circumstances. And if you feel something when you see a scene, that's when you will remember it. While the strong black woman insignia charades as a compliment, it really pardons the rest of the world of their responsibility to view the black woman as vulnerable, able to experience pain, capable of weakness, worthy of support, and unconditionally lovable. Until the black woman is allowed to reject this demand for strength, she'll never truly experience her own humanity. Did you catch that foolishness? She said until the black woman is allowed to reject this demand for strength, she will never truly experience her own humanity. Black women have proven that they are allowed to reject many, 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 many things, including this strong black woman image that they have created themselves. Is there a demand for strength? Absolutely. However, strength is not a virtue of the strong, but an illusion of the weak. You've created an illusion with feel good Kool-Aid as its foundation. It's all bark, but no bite. That's one of the reasons why black people haven't made any progress. Dr. Claude Anderson can tell you all about this. Here's the problem, that historically in this society, black folk have not moved one eye older than where they were in 1860 on the eve of the Civil War. In, in, in a comparative pro proportional term, black people are exactly where they were on the eve of the Civil War. And the eve of the Civil War, at that particular time, we had approximately 300,000 black people that were free in this country, or quasi-free, having come out of slavery. And that was out of five million black folk. And that 300,000 black people had mysteriously and miraculously accomplished and, uh, and acquired one half, one half of 1% of this nation's wealth. Now here you are 150 years later and black people still only have and own one half of 1% of the nation's wealth after 150 years. This could have been a great episode for Harlem. But as pointed out, they dropped the ball where it needed to count. Presenting this crooked image like they do in every episode. We're going to make a separate video highlighting the impact of strong black women on black men because they also highlighted that in this episode. But it will take a full video to break that down. Patreon supporters salute! Manosphere, we working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.